That microphone should be working. I'm gonna be real mad if it's not. I recently changed my, nope, not, not what I wanted, thank you. Recently changed my, um, my OBS settings to do recording, which, you know, involves potentially forgetting, and therefore, you know, when I start live streaming, there's a good chance that my audio won't come through. Um, so, you know what? <laughs> On that note, I swear this doesn't work. Hang on. Watch. Show me. Show me my live stream, please. <laughs> my channel. Show me. Excellent. There's my voice. Cool. We won't have four minutes of dead silence this time. <laughs> Excuse me. That happened. First live stream back to like hmm, good stuff. Okay, so as per usual, I think what we'll do. Let me really quickly check my properties. Cap capture any full screen option. We could just do a display capture. That might even be more reliable in the long run, but we'll see. Sugar, sugar bean water. I decided to finish off my creamer. This is purely for the VOD at this point. No one is here, I think. Um, but I decided to finish off my creamer because there was like this much left. Turns out this much was like, it was enough <laughs> to, to push it over the edge. So I have, uh, ex I have like, I'm drinking basically creamer with a side of coffee at this point. Um, so we'll start with Neverwinter Nights and then we can move into the, um, Effectively. Um, which part do I want to do next? There's the docks, the peninsula, the beggar's nest, Black Lake. If we go do Black Lake, Black Lake might be fine. Do you say here's a guard? Hello! Wailings caused its fair share of conflict beyond these gates, making it a dangerous place. Lady Erebeth has ordered us to restrict access. In other words, if you want to cross, if you want access to the Black Lake District, you're going to need um, quarantine clearance. She assigned me to temporary, temporary military duty. Jesus. I, there was one she'd be hiring on adventurers to help fill the ranks. What could I do for you? about the Black Lake District. I suppose I can answer a question for you last, but is there any way I can help out there? Well, best bet would be to talk to a guard in the area. Past my gate is a bit of the slums, but if you keep going, you'll reach the Black Lake gate. It's always interesting to me. Hey, night one. Game sound is too high. Oh, Jesus, you're right. I know exactly. Oh, I was so proud of myself. I was so proud. I know exactly why it was too high. And of course it crashed. I forgot. <laughs> I know what I'm sorry that was probably loud so I was talking about this earlier I don't know if you were here and and watching quietly but um yeah whenever I record I have to change my audio settings and I put the desktop audio all the way up because I edit the audio in DaVinci which is what I used to edit videos so when I do live streams I have to go through a checklist and because I've just recently got back into live streaming I have to reboot the game because it crashed because I all tapped out uh it's fine Thank you for telling me, by the way. I appreciate, because I would have gone forever <laughs> doing that. That's going to be a pain when that gets uploaded. Oh, well. C'est la vie. Such is the life of, of streaming. Hello. Um, yeah, so that was my bad. I was so proud of myself, too. I thought I hit all of the things that I needed to hit, and I sure didn't. <laughs> Um, is there any way I can help out? What was I saying? On the other side of the Black Lake... Oh, yeah. Uh, be careful on the way in, though. There's a burned-out bit of the city between here and the Black Lake proper. Nothing put plague-crazed thugs in there. Black Lake is fine, but the first bit is dangerous as hell. So, as I was saying... <laughs> before I was kindly... <laughs> uh, <laughs> informed of my mistake. Um, um, oh, yeah. 
It's so interesting to me that this is like the rich people district, but the slums are like right in front of it. I thought that was fascinating because there's a beggars district. So it's just very interesting that there's like literally a slums and then the super duper rich district. Unless, you know what, I guess maybe the concept is like the people that work in the slums are the people who work for the people in the Black Lake district. So maybe that's the concept. Excuse me. Uh, how bad is it in there? Well, the Black Lakes split into two parts, the Nobles Quarter and the rest of it. <laughs> nice. The Nobles are plague-free right now and sailed off tight. There's rumors the Nobles have a cure they aren't willing to share with the rest of us. I doubt it's true, but food attracts flies. Victims of the whaling have been flocking to the Black Lake barricades. They've done a few clashes already, so tread carefully. Uh, who is in the right? The barricaded nobles or the people who want in? Don't get me wrong. I can understand the nobles' desire to quarantine themselves. But some of the biggest crooks I've known were of noble birth. Maybe there's something to the rumors about the nobles having a cure and not wanting to share it. It doesn't sound likely, but the fact remains they're plague-free while the rest of the town gets sick. Man, my vision is going. I am not far. Like, literally, this is the distance between me and my laptop. I'm sure that was extremely helpful, me putting my hand in front of the camera anyways <laughs> um so and it's blurry <laughs> like this text is blurry so I might have to adjust myself I'm sorry if you see my messy room in the background it's been it's been a day of chasing toddlers around and I just haven't had a chance to straighten up in here but such is life toddlers I have one toddler anyway would you mind answering? Uh, no, we're good. Any places I should look out for? The Nobles Quarter itself is all barricaded in, but being a guard gives you access. Once inside, you can check out the zoo. We have a quest for that in the north. And a rough house tavern called the Board Laid Bear in the center of the district, if you want. Cool beans. Thanks, sir. I'm going to take my doggos and get in there. Okay. You look like a person I could talk to. Please, can you help me? I don't know what to do. Tell me what's wrong. My name is Sendrin, and everything has gone wrong. Excuse me. This whole area is overrun, and those... Oh, I'm live streaming. I can say it. Bastards in the Black Lake don't care. They've locked themselves away, abandoning the whole place. Why is this area in such bad shape? After the whaling began, we got caught between the quarantine and the Black Lake barricades. We were at the mercy of the plague thugs. Some of them used to be friends, but the plague took their minds, drove them mad. They became like animals. Then Loxar showed up. Tell me about this Loxar. Loxar is a big half-orc. Not sure where he came from. He showed up after the first few plague thugs started going mad. Loxar looted in their wake. After a while, when the place was disrupted, Loxar start just started killing people and taking whatever he wanted. I think he realized the guards don't care about us in here. I think I'm one of the last survivors. I have no reason to stay. He's killed my family, taken everything. I just want to know he's dead before I try to get to the city core. Yee boy, I got you. I'll do it. You, you will? Thank you. Loxar is in this no man's land somewhere. He's pretty much taken whatever houses he's wanted. There's still plague mad thugs around here too. Uh oh, I missed. Please be careful. You're the first person to give a damn about anything that's happened here. Thank you. Don't worry, sir. I know what I'm doing. Vaguely. <laughs> I have a vague idea of what I am doing at any given time. Alright, get him. Get him. Oh, ye boy. I, I could have animal empathy. Yes. <gasps> okay, no, wait, no. Stop, 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 stop. Aw, oh, dang it. I'm never going to be able to actually use animal empathy, I think. I don't... There's no reason. Because if I use animal empathy and my team is already attacking stuff, it they're not going to stop attacking it because they're already aggroed. I guess... I get... I guess, it, wait, hang on, let's see, attack nearest, follow, stand your ground, guard me. Maybe that's what we have to do. Maybe we need to give them a command when I'm trying to animal empathy something so that they don't, so that they don't kill it, because God knows, like, I do succeed, oh, hang on, animal empathy, target must be aware of you, butts. Okay, can I, no, 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 no. Oh god, I pressed the wrong thing. Okay, hang on. Alright, well, it's dead. Alright. One day, animal empathy will be useful. Today is not that day, but... They've got it. I'm just gonna go get this real quick. 
Yes, it would have bothered me had I not. Oh, did you guys get everything? Nice. <laughs> Excuse me. So we'll do... Oh, wait, there's stuff here. <laughs> I want to know how they got these screams. Like, do you think that they, they like, paid people to sit in a recording studio and scream? Or do you think that they, like like bought the sound bites from somewhere because the screams in this game are like they're what's the word I'm looking for? They're guttural. Just like absolute just I'm dying. I've lost everything. I I hold dear to me. Like they are some intense screams. <laughs> I've gotten used to like blocking it. I didn't check if this hang on, I'm gonna save real quick. Because if I don't, it will crash. And I just wanted to check and see if the audio is good. Let's see. I wish... It's so weird. Because, like, I can see the stream in the, like, the streaming, like, if I want to control this. Let's see. Let's pop over here real quick. I see the stream, like, but I need the to... Stream. I need to pull it back. I cannot. Okay, well, I'm gonna just have this on, I guess. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm just. I guess I'll just have this on, I guess, because. Um, here we go. I guess I'll just have this on, I guess, because. Sorry. I think the audio is okay. It's a little loud. <sighs> I have to. Maybe I can. Uh, maybe I can lower it in here. <laughs> we could do. Um, we'll do like 40, 90. There we go. It's not a perfect solution, but alt tabbing out crashes the game. So, animal empathy? No. Okay. Well. It's hard because by the time I tell them all to stop attacking it, that thing's going to be dead. <laughs> oh yeah, let me go back to the proper area for cre for creator mode. No, 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 not that one. Stream manager. There we go. Perfect. Where am I? All right, let's go up. Oops. Just kidding. One gold. That was worthwhile. I figure it's a good idea to like kind of start streams like this, um, partly to wait for the couple extremely wonderful, extremely kind people who do come and hang out. Because God bless them, God God bless those people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I I digress. Uh, also, it just kind of gets me into the mood, like, for when we do start working on the module. Gets me in the right mindset of game design, so, or even level design, because, well, not that there's a whole lot of control over level design in this, since everything is kind of prefab. Yeah, that's, yeah, there, it, prefab is the right word. You know, this music with this French horn suddenly made me think of, uh, Lord of the Rings, and now I just really want to play a Lord of the Rings game, <laughs> which is very random. Hey, God King R, welcome. Oops, not, nah, just kidding. Oh, I didn't mean to click you. Hello. Oh, empty. Eerie. <sighs> is there an upstairs? There is not. All right. <laughs> How is the volume? Is the volume for the game okay, or did I make it quiet? <laughs> I was worried that it was loud. It was too loud earlier, which is my bad. And I was so proud of myself, too. <laughs> Oops, I thought he was dead. <laughs> That's funny. I think I need to turn on power, power swing. Oops, did they run off to... Oh, yeah, they did. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> They're fine. They've got this. Rob, oh yeah, they've got this. I I checked their health and I, they're all full, and I was like, 
they're fine. I'll just just be over here getting items. I don't know if this is if me not taking part in the fight and looting stuff affects the exp I get, but eh. something that I'm curious about that we'll probably have to. It sounds good. That's good. Something that we'll probably have to look into is whether or not um, henchmen level up. Because I actually don't know. I know that he's, I think, level 14. Um, which obviously makes him extremely powerful. Which also makes him seem like he would be too powerful, right? Like he should be one-shotting stuff, but he's not. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> There was a 14 next to him when I was looking at him online. If I can find, like, a regular game guide for this, I might get it just to take a look at it. Um, also, because I like game guides, and I... Oh, that was Loxar. Get him. Oh, wait. Oh, I forgot. That's fine. He's dead. I'm almost dead. We lost a dog? <gasps> oh, this jerkwad. Hey, I got the head of Loxar. Brutal. Hey, right, man. All right. So, who 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 didn't die? Oh my gosh. Lassie died. Might be a good idea to just rest, actually. <laughs> now that I think about it. I recently finished reading um Rings which, if anyone has ever seen the Ring movie, or the Japanese version, Ringu, that sounded... <laughs> Ringu? It's not like Ringo from the Beatles. Um, sorry, I said that it sounded so... Show us the game guide. Yeah. Oh, the collection? I keep meaning to. There's so many that I have to figure out how, to, how best to film it, because they're all actually in a bookshelf on the bottom shelf in a corner so filming them next to the bookshelf is not it's, it's easier said than done oh god okay um so i've been meaning to and also a couple of them are scattered a little bit and i'm missing one and i'm really upset because the one that i'm missing is dark cloud 2 and that like genuinely upsets me because i've owned that i did own that one a really really long time i'm not i'm not like I'm not a, a super... Jesus. Oh, that scared the snot out of me. Oh, my God. I wasn't ready. <sighs> I'm fine. <sighs> um, help. This guy's kind of... He's on my... Oh, okay, never mind. I was like, he's on my butt, but he's almost dead. He's going to die. Maybe if you wore actual armor instead of a, a shirt in which your heart is just... Bared for all the world. Lol. Get wrecked. If I remember correctly, these were hired thugs that were meant to kill me. Because I'm going to save everybody. I love the idea of the... Yeah, see, look, here we go. The American movie was cool. I mean, I liked it. I didn't like the second one. The second one was weird. The book is really weird. I'll get into it. This, uh, the plague spreads more quickly than we could possibly have hoped. The streets are thick with corpses, and the citizens are on the verge of open rebellion. Soon, Neverwinter will be brought to its knees, and the next phase can begin. But this will not happen if a cure for the Wailing Death is discovered. You must do everything in your power to prevent Arabeth and her agents from ending the plague. All right. Well. That sounds... That sounds like attempted... Not but... Never mind. I'll just leave that. It's probably not worth much. All right, hang on. Thank you. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So the book. Uh, there's a series. There, it's a trilogy. They're tech. I think they're technically all standalones. Like you could read them all separately. Um, at least that's what I read online. But I'm reading them in order. Um. The first one, Ring, I just finished. It's it's crazy. It is definitely a... Uh, there we go. I finally... Did I activate? Or was that an actual ability? I think that's an actual ability. Never mind. 
<laughs> Don't I swear I have that ability though. Right? Like special abilities. Hang on. One second. Let me just figure this out. Mount actions. I'm sorry. When the flibbity widgets did I get wild shape? And who was gonna tell me? I have it? I have the ability. Did I choose the ability? When did I get this? Shut the front door. I can be a badger. I want. I kind of want to be a bear. I'd be a wolf. I'd just be a wolf pack. I don't know which one to be. Oh my god. I'm ecstatic. I have. I have wild shape. I'm gonna be a bear. Oh hell yeah! Oh my god, save! Oh my god, because <laughs> I might die. Oh, I'm a bear. I'm a bear. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, I love it. I'm done. <laughs> Last stream. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, that's right. I got it at the very end, didn't I? And I just didn't even notice. I think I saw it very briefly. Maybe commented on it. Did I come in here? Mm, why was that red? Did I steal something? Is there someone alive in here? There's no one in here. Why was that red? Anyways. <gasps> um, okay, so we do actually have to head back because we need to go talk to the person over here because he gave us a quest. But, so anyways, the movie ring, or the book ring, uh, it takes place in a, like approximately 1990 and you follow a detective called Asakawa and his best friend Ryuji. And I'm going to call them that because in the English translation, they don't really rely upon like Japanese honorifics and um, typically how people title themselves in J Japan, which is usually by their last names. Um, temporary hit points. Did I gain more hit points? Hell yeah. Uh, so it's so Asakawa is like a journalist and he is already kind of like. He indicates that he's kind of a believer in the su supernatural, but he doesn't, like, really think about it. Anyways, I have the head of the villain that was killing everyone. You do! I knew someone would make him pay. I knew there had to be some justice left somewhere. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wish I had something to give you, but I have nothing but my gratitude. I, I thank you. That's fine. I'm a bear. <laughs> what do I need of, of treasure? Anyways. So... <clears throat> um. Oh, right. So what ends up happening is Asakawa's niece is a teenager who ends up dying because she saw the tape, which it's still a tape. And I, I actually really liked the concept of the book. I don't know. I'm, I'm probably going to wind up spoiling this. Maybe I shouldn't. <laughs> I really want to talk about it, but I probably shouldn't do it in the live stream format because anyone popping in would be like, what the heck, man? Um... <laughs> Fit, rightly so because it'd be spoilers but at the same time like I want to talk about it so bad um yeah so it's just a it's a very interesting experience because like just the way that the ring is like written is not really a horror novel in the sense that you've like come to expect of horror um it's it's an incredibly good mystery thriller is what it is and it uh it just presents itself that way. Stop right where you are, citizen. Commoners are not allowed to enter the Black Lake District. I am a member of the city guard. I am a bear. You must be pulling my leg. You're animal. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The city guard has so many new recruits, I can't even keep up. I think I've heard of you, though. <laughs> he commented on the fact that I'm a bear. I love that. Can you imagine a bear and two dire wolves walking towards you? <laughs> <laughs> and a half work. Oh man, this dude would be like, "Oh no, I'm not paid enough for this." <laughs> like, look at them. They look like they're about to go after him. Oh my god, I've been commanded to find the water davian creatures. Have you heard about them? I just heard that they're supposed to cure the plague or some such. I think it'd be a desperate fool who'd believe that monsters don't cure plagues. Do you have any rumors? Sorry, no tales of monsters running around the district. Not that I've heard anyway. Maybe you've heard of someone who might know more. Acting strangely. Well, I suppose Muldanen has been ha, would certainly qualify, although acting strange is nothing new for him. He's a wizard, they say. Sort of an odd bird amongst the nobility. People have been saying that Muldanen's hoarding food. Some think that he should share some of it with the common folk. I don't know. I wouldn't go messing with Muldanen myself. Is there something else you need? Nope. 
Deeper tunic gone. Bro, I'm a bear. I don't have a tunic. I wonder if this is going to affect, like, my charisma. <laughs> Me being a bear, I mean. I'm so excited. I didn't get to kill anyone as a bear. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay, this area is huge. And I, I get lost in this area quite often, which is sad. But I... D why, why is that red? Is that because I'm a bear? <laughs> is it because I'm a bear? How come I don't have... Um... Where's my wild shape? Summon creature. Oh, I think I got. I think I remember. I got distracted by summon creature three. <laughs> hmm. I was curious to see. Excuse me. We have healing sting. That's right. I wanted to see if I could access my. Eats or my special abilities and I can't remember no that's player list okay J no it's journal H nope that's apparently the UI okay that's gone <laughs> hi ice ice gray stray reject humanity become bear absolutely man I am if I can stay a bear and have it not negatively impact G oh wrong button I know there's a way to because I wanted to get the special okay key settings game inventory quick chat character street spells is not what i want i don't think there is an ability dm i forgot that you you could technically run entire D, &D games in this like that is a thing that you can do degenerate show some modesty and dress yourself Y'all are just jealous, all right? Like, <sighs> animal companion. Can I, oh, how do I get, oh. <laughs> can I not leave my animal companion shape? Or my animal form? <sighs> yeah, it's, oops, it's gonna affect how everybody views me because they all suck. Oh my God, the pathing. As a bear, you would either have people terrified if you were people wanting to hug you, right? You'd think. Heckin' rude, man. I think stuff is red because I technically can't use it. I can pick it up. Oh, hell yeah. No way. I got this too, man. Bash that. I'm a bear. Can I not? Oh, no. That's dead. Okay. The dog got it. I mean, the wolf. I, should, I keep calling them dogs, and they're not dogs. I probably should not be a bear when I'm around people. I do think this is going to negatively impact my, uh, my everything. I don't think this is going to make me not a bear. Anyways, yeah, so ring was really cool. Oh, there we go. Okay, no, I am. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think about, like, what I was going to say. It's just, uh, there's a, there's a couple of oddities <laughs> with ring. Uh, or rings is what the book is called. Um, you know, a couple of the oddities being like just the way that they talk about a lot of stuff. A huge, I'm just, I don't know if this is going to get me flagged. I'm just going to say it's the R word, you know, rape. Um, it is a huge prevalent theme in the book. So it's just sort of thrown out there. And some stuff, they make you believe some stuff involving that. For 99.9% .9 of the book and then throw a or not <laughs> at the very end. Hi there. You look nice. You nice? You look nice. Mama says lots of people aren't nice. Maybe even downstairs. What's downstairs? Yeah, there's something behind the bookcase, but Mama says we're not allowed to talk about. Uh, I can't see anymore. I don't want Mama to know that I know the secret word. You maybe go talk to her about it, okay? We're friends. <gasps> I won. <laughs> I got her. <laughs> Well, I guess. Just don't tell Mama. I hid behind the bookshelf. You say a word and it opens. It's a silly word, though. The word is halueth. I don't know what it means, but it opens a shelf when you say it. Weird, huh? You shouldn't be outside. It's dangerous. I suppose, but Mama doesn't mind. She says people get sick at home, at work, and at church. So what's wrong with me being in the street? Sides. She was mad because I went behind the bookcase again. Says it's not good to be there. Out of curiosity... 
Um, here we go. We need to go find the tombs. Oh. My is not as near as tomb can be reached. We were in the peninsula district, so we already got that one. So we're going to have to read. Oops. Oop. Oop. Okay. So, Hallowith Diglog book. We are in the Black Lake district, and it's in the southwestern court quarter i was a corridor and i'm pretty sure that's where we are right now hi don't brandish your weapon at me there's enough to fear in this place with a plague of milton and well anyways i'm just gonna scoot around you thank you hey telma Hello there. begging your pardon but why are you in my home not that nobility or the like can't go wherever they want uh and there's no reason you shouldn't go where you want really i didn't mean to cause a fuss my name is telma if you want to know. I want to ask some questions. I suppose. Is there a reason you're here? Again, I don't really mean to object, but if there's nothing here for you. Do you know of anything odd? Any rumors? No. I mean, of course not. Why would I know of anything odd? I mean, there's the plague, of course. What else needs to be happening besides that? You seem agitated. Is there something hidden here? I, well, I didn't mean to give the impression that... Oh, hell with it. It looks like you know already. There's something under my house. See, we were digging a, uh, storage place behind the bookcase and down, well, to hide things from the city guards. It didn't pan out, though. There's something not right down there. There's a door we could never open and sounds that come from behind it. Look at the bookcase and say the word Halueth. Halueth. Halueth? You'll see for yourself. What kind of sounds? Would you go poking around in the dark? Maybe, but maybe you could handle it if you found something. Me, I just get killed. All right, I'm going to look, all right? That's your decision, I guess. The entrance is hidden behind the bookcase. I love the fact that, like, I could have just got the password from her, I guess. Anyways, speak the word Halloweth. This is what we're looking for. Oh, God. Okay, well, I... All right, I didn't think I was going to get attacked straight away, but I probably should have... Oh, wait... Sorry, guys. Give me a second. Um, we're gonna be a bear. Aw, oh, hell yeah, bubby. Oops, my chat's gone. Guys. Aw, oh, man. <laughs> Leave me some dead people. Uh-oh. Okay. A splinter delivered in flight. A splinter? Oh. I know. I just want one. I have failed in the task. Dang it. That's not it. I was so sure that was it. It says a splinter delivered in flight. I was thinking it was an arrow. It has to be, right? Unless it wants a bolt. How about that one? <laughs> no? Do you want a lot of arrows? <laughs> Why do I have two torches? I don't need two torches. You can have that. I'm <laughs> free of charge. How big is this place? It's uh, it's a tomb. So it's part of the Halloweth tomb that we were looking at before. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that they... It's part of the sewers now. Also, there are some strange noises down here. Oh, maybe... Oh, I'm an idiot. Hang on. <laughs> we have the ceremonial item. I'm a dingbat. Alright, anyways, I forgot. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm over here like, oh, I have an arrow. I can put that in there. Yeah, I have an arrow. <laughs> I have the arrow. Okay, here we go. Now we're going into ne ne Never's tomb. Ah, uh, buds. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. All right, no, 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 no. Oh, uh, I'm not useful. I'm stuck. Oh, Jesus. Oh, this is going poorly. Oh, this went badly. Okay, okay, okay. Hang on, we got to think about this. Those, oh, that's the wrong save. Hang on. <laughs> this one. I was like, where is this? 
Oh, wait, no, I guess... Oh, it is the right save. I was just weirdly zoomed out. Right. Maybe see if the little girl reacts to being a bear. <laughs> okay. I don't know how this is going to go, especially because I can't cast any spells, so... Okay, I need to actually be helpful. Unable to reach target. This is... Alright, this is not going to work. <laughs> I need to be able to reach the targets to help them because, like, I'm huge, unfortunately. And that is impacting my ability to be helpful. <laughs> I think I can do this. It's just, you know... Oh, no. Alright, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Attack, attack, attack. Oh, no, no, no. Attack. Come on. Barely injured. Okay, Dalueth, not doing, not, not looking all that hot. Um, um, okay, he's dead. Cool, we've lost a wolf. This is going terribly. Yeah, alright. We might actually need to be a person for this, which is a bummer. enemies nearby. There are no enemies nearby. I've cleared out this area. We're in another room. Oh boy. That was... That did not go well. <laughs> to put that lightly. Maybe there's an enemy over there. Oh my gosh. I was trying to path and it was like, uh, I can't. No, no, that's badly trapped. This is badly trapped. Oh, yay. I want to be a bear for like at least a minute. <laughs> yes. I'm amazing. See, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> yeah, I don't have any trap abilities, so we're just going to have to. We're just going to have to not. A skeleton's knuckle. Delightful. Yeah, we're not going to be able to be people. I mean, we're not going to be able to be a bear for this, I think. <laughs> Unfortunately. Ah, we're going to have to be a druid. Okay, so, real quick, let's summon our backup. I'm going to cast... No, 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 no. Oh my god, I would have had to rest again. I'm going to cast Bark Skin on me. Why is my cloak off? I don't have a cloak anymore. <laughs> I think it glitched. <laughs> I have my cloak on, but I don't have a cloak on in my model, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so let me, let me, let me. We're going to save again. Same save. And then I'm also going to just do this. And then we're going to give him, we're going to give him bark skin. Excellent. And then last but not least, we're going to give me this. And we're going to cast this. Obidai, er dua, er cut. All right. Oh, dear. Okay. You know what I can probably do? Oh, my God. Do I have... I have grease, which could be helpful. Ow. Okay, Dalen is looking... Oh, Lassie's down. And so is that. <laughs> oh, I'm not looking good. I should have... Uh... Alright, cool. That didn't work. We're so close. We're so close. This is a little harder. <laughs> Alright, I have to, I think I, I wasn't going to save because I wasn't sure if I liked the, the loadout for things that I did. I think I'm going to. Okay, um. And then we're going to cast this. On Lassie, I guess. There we go. I was like, why can't I cast this? And then we're going to put Bull's Strength on Dalen. 
save. I'm going to put this on a different save just in case I decide that I don't like this loadout. And then we're going to try again. I'm going to go with these two. Oh my god. I keep pressing the wrong button. Maybe I can do Grease. Oh my god. Lassie is already down. Oh no. This is bad. Okay, hang on. Um. Use. Oh my god. This is going really badly. <laughs> I'm gonna do this injured. Oh my god, he's down. Okay, this. Did it work? Did I do the healing sting? I don't think I did. Oh my god. Drink it! Drink it! Okay, um... This feels... extremely impossible. And I'm like... I'm like kitted out, right? Like... <laughs> okay, maybe if I use a bow, right? Maybe if I use a bow. Oh, this is going just abysmal. What are you, why, why, why? Why would you run all the way up to it when you are using a bow? I don't, oh my god, there goes Lass. Lassie's down, which now of course means, you know, maybe, maybe the right thing to do is to just simply, oh no, oh this is bad. Oh, can I? Oh, no. All right. I think this is what I'm going to do. I think this, this is what I'm going to do. Okay. We're not going to fight these. These are insane. We're going to let my team <laughs> fight these. I'm going to... Uh, I have a winged helmet. I don't need this. All right, 81 pounds. It's not great. Um, yeah, you guys do that. Uh-oh. I thought those were stairs. They were not. I can do this. Uh, don't mind me. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I thought I would be able to go through them. I, in fact, was not. Okay, wow, cool, we did it. Awesome. <laughs> Alright, I cheesed the flip out of that, but can you blame me? We got Shrekt. That's my summon. Has one health. We're gonna, we're just gonna walk over to this guy. I cheesed the heck out of that. They, that might have been, um... A little too strong for me. And I don't think I... I don't remember if I've ever beaten that. Hey, Olaf, I found something. Isiovuying sen followisen. I have an artifact from one of the tombs. You do? Wonderful. Please tell me what it is you have found. Um, here's the armor. His very armor. And the location of his tomb. Who would have thought it was just beneath the surface amid so many others? It speaks of his desire to be known as just another Neverwinton. Neverwinton? Neverwinterin? Neverwinterian? Despite his greatness, he never forgot his home. As I said, you are to be rewarded. Here, take this 200 gold. It's not much, but there's more to come. Considering what I just had to escape from, bra. Your efforts are appreciated. A light has been cast on Hallowith Never and his life, but there is still more to be found. There are further artifacts of his travels. Return to me if you find them. I shall reward you fairly, plus more when they are all recovered. Thank you. Am I still over encumbered? No. Do I get to keep the axe? <gasps> but I can't use it. It's a really good axe, too. My heart weeps. I want to use an axe. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we should probably. Okay. <laughs> I can't believe how hard that was. Like, we got shreked. 
That may have required a slightly higher level. That's okay, though. I don't need a slightly higher level. Not when I have... Speed. <laughs> it's like the first time that we've had some serious trouble in this. Um, I need to talk to you. Oh. Never mind. I was going to tell her about the note. I think I need to go talk to Fenthic. I require temple services. She really just does not like me. And I have no idea why. Sell. 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 Um, what is this for? Nothing useful. Cool. I don't want to sell the axe. Fine. Um. At least I'm not over encumbered anymore. I guess I could see if there's anything I can afford. I have 2,000 gold, which is pretty good, but I don't think I'm going to be able to afford my axe. It's my axe. I have an amulet on, so there's no point. You have two rings already. I don't think there's anything else, really. We're going to go talk to... Fenther. I almost said Feindel, which is from <laughs> Dragon Age. I was just like... <laughs> My brain just died. I thought you might be interested in this note. What do we have here? Hmm, it seems the plague was unleashed on us as part of some greater plot. We may have worse trials ahead of us than the Wailing Death. What could be worse than the Wailing Death, Fenthic? I fear Issy of Yang is playing a trick on you with this so-called evidence of some grand conspiracy. Dude, I'm about to... I'm about to punch you. Alright, like, let's go, man. Fisticuffs. So you say... But anyone can write up a note, Issy of Yuyang. Perhaps. <laughs> I wish I could claim. That's unusual for you. Don't you normally grind? I would, like... The thing about this game is that you can't really grind because enemies don't respawn. Um, so, if you start at level 1 in this game, you're that's it. Like, you... you it's on... What's the word? On rails, I guess. Like, the amount of experience points that I can get in this is very on rails. So what it could mean is just simply that I'm doing Black Lake at a part of the story where I probably shouldn't be. Um, you could say that maybe the Black Lake district is meant to be done last. So I guess I, I could just say no to Black Lake for a little bit and then go do, like, the Beggar's Nest, which might be um, a more my style or more my level it also could be said potentially that I'm supposed to do these last um, instead of doing it alongside the wailing death quest line but I'm not sure it also could just be that those enemies there were too many of them <laughs> kind of similar to how I did my module but who knows anyone can write up a note perhaps you thought you could use this slip of paper to pry a reward from Fenthic please Dester, I hardly think Issy Ovi Yuyang is the, is the kind of woman to do such a thing. I think this bears further investigation at the very least. The plague is a trial sent by the gods to test our faith, not part of some secret plot to overthrow Neverwinter. Chasing these conspiracy theories is a waste of time. Fenthic should follow every lead. What's the matter, Dester? Do you have something to hide? Do you, Dester? Do you? How dare you accuse me, after all I have done for this city. You see what kind of people your Lady Erebeth prefers to work with, Fenthic? Hang on, you know, last time I checked, Dester, I'm the one going into the districts, okay? To fight monsters and zombies and floating swords to get the cure. Not you. So shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> Just get real close to his face. <laughs> see what kind of, yeah. Please, Oops, excuse me. Please, we're all on the same side here. I know you and Dester do not get along, it's Yovi Yuyang, but that is no excuse for tossing out baseless accusations. Dester and his Helmites have done as much for the city as anyone. Accusing him because you dislike his attitude is beneath you and does nothing to help the situation. Don't tell me what's beneath me, man. I'm a bear. 
Okay. I mean, not right now, but I could be. Okay. <laughs> Rest assured that I intend to follow every lead in my efforts to find out who is behind the suffering of Neverwinter. You have done well to bring this to me, Isio Viewing. It's an honor to serve Neverwinter. Lord Nasher has given me the authority to grant compensation to those who serve our cause for bringing me this note. I can give you 250 gold. That's fine. I don't want to ask for more. Is there anything else you need, Isio Viewing? I'll be going. <laughs> Just look at, at Dester, the tiny elf with huge antlers. Can you imagine there's like a helmet, and I'm just like... <laughs> you can't see my face or anything. It's just it's just a helmet with antlers. I think that that might be what we do. Maybe we'll do the, the beggar's nest, because now that I'm remembering the black... They're all hard in their own right, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, but yeah, there's the real the real thing to do in this... It's one of the hardest parts about this and some of the modules that get created for Neverwinter Nights is that some of them are designed with you bringing a pre-made character in mind or using a pre-made character. Like some of the ones that I've shown you guys before, um, like the level 50 knight and um, all that fun stuff. Oh, I guess I should have talked to the lady. But like, thanks for letting me. You don't shout when you get <laughs> you whisper. <laughs> a part of that is, don't know why you're in my home now. Whatever is my basement is done and gone. Is it? I didn't actually kill those swords. So, I mean, th those are still in your basement. <laughs> I didn't get rid of those. I guess if, I, if, if I'm a bear, which is, I think, technically a tank animal... I could theoretically go get uh, go get my my henchman back, my my thief. I don't know. Maybe we should stick to our a guard dog. <gasps> Hello, my friend. I love you. I wonder if I could have him in my team. Animal empathy. I got an item. Did I actually? No. Okay. Maybe I already had that. Oh, actually, hang on. She was stuck. It's on my team. It's on my team. I have the dog. I got the dog. Where am I? Is this the zoo? I think this is the zoo. Can I be a bear? Oh my god. Can I save the zoo as a bear? Oh, it's not the zoo. A disgruntled nobleman. Why are you in my home? What business do you have here? None lawful, I'll wager. I'm with the city guard. I don't trust the look of you, villain. Just because there's a plague, you think you can walk anywhere? Ugh, I was just leaving. Oh my god, I hate this guy. I mean, I don't really want to steal stuff. What do you have to hide? Huh? Why are you so, uh... Why are you so, so defensive? Huh? What's there to hide? I'm with, uh, I'm with Arabeth, okay? What do you have to hide? I mean, he's got treasure chests, but... I don't really want to steal from him. I'm just, you know suspicious. I took your dog. Anyways, I think my party is the zoo. <laughs> You're not wrong. I'm tempted. I mean, like, her her ability to get people to like her is already kind of null. I'm not gonna lie. So I'm tempted to just make her an animal and just, you know, the only thing is, is that I won't have access to, like, who are you? What do you want? I won't have access to, like, my spells. Who are you? I'm Thurin, captain of the guard in the Black Lake District, madam. Might I know who's asking? Uh, my name is Isio Viewing, send fellow we send. Pleased to meet you, Captain Thurin. Thank you. I have plenty of problems I must contend with today, Isio Viewing, send fellow we send. <laughs> what can I do for you? Um, I'm looking for work if you know anything. Work? If you're looking for work, perhaps you could be of assistance. Well, beyond trying to keep the plague out of the district, one of my men seems to have disappeared without a trace. I suppose that in itself wouldn't be so odd, considering the times. But I know this man too well. He's an old friend of mine named Samuel, and he wouldn't just leave. Excuse me. Do you have any idea where he could be? I know where he's not. He hasn't reported back to his barracks, and his family hasn't seen him. He also hasn't left Black Lake. Not by the gates, anyway. Some of my men seem to think Samuel is drunk in some gutter somewhere. The old man drank, certainly, but he's never disappeared. It would take something more to do that. 
Um, have you had your men search for him? I don't have the manpower. Right now, it's all I can do to hold down the gates and keep Black Lake calm. I've told my men to keep on the lookout, but nothing so far. <coughs> do you know where he was last seen? Samuel was one of my inspectors. My best one, in fact. He may have been looking into something, but if he was, he never told anyone what he was doing. Um, do you have any idea where he could be? I know where he's not. Okay. I could look for him. Would you? I suppose at this point, I can't be too picky about whom I ask for help. If you could look for Samuel, madam, that would be quite a relief. If you do find him, tell him to return if he can. At the very least, I would like to be certain of his fate. No, I'm not going to ask for a coin up front. I'll find him if I can. I'll find Samuel and return him safely, I promise. Thank you, thank you. Godspeed. Cool, well, I got a quest out of coming in here. I'm looking for people with names. I like this bar that we have. Hi, bartender. Anything interesting in this tavern? Nothing that needs to be set out in the open. Nope, nothing at all. Come on. Nope, I don't think so. Aw, oh, man. <laughs> it's unfavorable. Why do people hate me? People hate me. Um, boots of striding. I don't have boots, but... Also, I don't really want to spend... I mean, what's the, the boots? It's uh, boots with the fur. Constitution plus one. That is kind of useful. I need a belt. I need a belt and boots. What is this one? Oh, this is discipline. I also kind of need gloves. Because this, this gives me discipline, but I don't really remember what discipline does. <laughs> I'm being perfectly honest. Can I go through here? Doesn't appear to have anything, I mean. Alright, help. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Alright. Eh. <laughs> Oops, my chat. Alright. Uh, uh. Alright, let's see. I've been streaming for about an hour, so I should probably stop and get started on the mod. Uh, mod learning mod oh god okay i was in there for five minutes came out and it is now nighttime i should go do the zoo that's a very druid quest so just be like hang on the plague's gotta wait there's an unethical zoo that needs to be taken care of i think this might be something you have the power to do something about it rise up rise up and share your power Who are you? Oh god, we have the same face. What do you say? Don't you think Maldanon should be forced to stop his hoarding and give up his stores? It is, after all, the duty of the people to watch over their own. What say you? Who is this Maldanon? You don't know about Maldanon? Well, you must not be from around here, that's for certain. Maldanon is a vicious and evil little man. He does whatever he pleases in Black Lake because he has two things magic and power. He kidnaps people for his experiments, and has all sorts of magical abominations in his estate, and all the other nobles pretend not to notice. Well, I won't, and I'm not intimidated by him. His merchant house has been hoarding food and goods for years in this district, and he should give it up whether he likes it or not. How do you know there's an actual hoard? You talk like that's in question. Maldonan has never denied that fact, and everyone in Black Lake knows it's true. He keeps a warehouse near here, locked up so tight with spells and wards there's no hope of access without the proper key. Otherwise, the city would have stormed it long ago, I'm sure. Everyone's too frightened of Maldonan to do anything about it, however. So much easier to sit behind these walls and pretend there's no plague at all. Who are you? My name is Formosa Le Leitanen. Daughter of a noble house. I may be shut in behind these walls along with the rest of the nobility, but that doesn't mean I think we don't have a responsibility to the city. There are people starving out there. I would help them if I had food to offer, but only Meldanen has it. And having his hoard taken and given to the sick is the very least that Mel Meldanen should suffer. Um, we already asked that. Um, I think you're making trouble and you should stop. I'm neutral good. No. Yeah? I'm neutral, neutral. I think I'm true neutral right now. I'm neutral good. Sure, I agree with you. Well, that's good to hear. There's few people around here with some courage to know what's right and say it out loud. I'm trying to think what neutral good would be. Hello. 
teacher, oh, hang on, teacher Giller me Stockler? God Kinger or Doppelganger? Long lost twin? What happened? Did I miss something? I feel like I missed something. The only question that remains is that uh, is what's to be done about it. The city guard have their hands full just keeping order and the chance of me stirring up these frightened pigeons to act is no good. Something drastic needs to be done and it needs to be done by those who have the ability and the conviction. Like you, madam. Will you help me? What exactly do you have in mind? That depends. Are you averse to performing a task that someone would consider underhanded? How underhanded are we talking about here? I am speaking of killing Maldanen and taking from him the key to his warehouse. That seems... You both have the same face? Oh, oh my gosh, I'm stupid. Pfft, yeah, because I already forgot. <laughs> my brain went... Pfft. I thought you were calling... I thought something happened with God King R's username and there was like a thing going on. My brain... I already like... I was like, oh, well, we have the same face. And then that was it. That was, the topic was gone, like, out of the park. Anyways, um, you kill him? Very well. I'll just, I will steal this, the key, but I will not murder a man. Um, you'll kill him or me? I'm no killer, madam. If I were, I would have challenged the sorcerer long ago, and all this would be unnecessary. This seems very much like a noble person thing to do. Um, excuse me, would you like to go in there and please kill that man? And I'm like, eh. I will steal the key, but I will not murder a man. As you wish. I suspect, however, that you will quickly change your mind once you discover the true nature of him. The key that allows access to his hoard is what is important, however. Bring me that. Should you happen to change your mind and give Meldon and his new, I'll not argue. Meldon lives in a walled mansion in the northwest corner of Black Lake. His, gar his gate is guarded well, and there are other wards, but somehow you must gain entry. I do not expect you to do this without reward, of course. Bring me the key, and I will give you a magic necklace. For the sorcerer's silver tooth, I offer you five hundred gold pieces. That is all I can offer you, and it is a fair service for the price you will render. Well, okay. Thank the gods that you came, then. Maybe some good can finally come out of all this. Excuse me. Anyways, so... Um, I think he is actually a terrible person, if I remember correctly. So we probably will wind up, end up, we, bleh, we probably will end up killing him. You, you better step you. back. Mr. Rumbottom does not permit strangers to enter his estate. I, I don't get a chance to speak with people all that often. I'm usually caring for Mr. Rumbottom's horse, but he claims to have lost it. Now I'm a guard. I'm sorry, I do tend to ramble. What is it you wanted? Who are you? Oh, I'm just watching the door, though I'm not sure why. This isn't my proper job. I care for animals. I'm no fighter. The pay ain't worth it. Mr. Rumbottom has become concerned that his security is not up to snuff, so he's thrown a bunch of people at the problem. You should see the brutes inside. Vicious lot. But I, who am I to question the oh-so-important merchant nobility? Mr. Rumbottom does as he wishes, though I swear I've never swung a sword in my life. Anything interesting going on in here? I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with this area at all. I usually just tend to the horses, trying to stay out of the way. Old Worthington in the stables used to know a lot about politics and such, but he died last week. Anything else you need? I'm um, looking for work? If I knew of any work worth having, I'd have taken the job myself. Anything to get away from guarding this bloody door. Goodbye, then. Yeah, I'm not gonna... Well, hello, Millie. No business to ya. What is it, girl? Make it snappy. Haven't got all day. Could I ask you some questions? Go on, then. I could stand to gab for a moment or two. Who are you? Heh! Most of the rich folk around these parts just call me the cleaning lady. Weren't always so, of course. Once I had me a pretty name to match me a face. The city pays me a bit of coin to go round the district and keep it tidy, sure enough. I, I always takes in laundry from me neighbors. Um, so you've been in every house, then? Not every house, silly girl, but close enough it may, as it makes no difference. Are there certain estates you won't go into? Oh my, you certainly wouldn't catch me going to Maldanen's estate to take his laundry, of all things. No, no, no. Mind you, there was a time. Ah, but I should not talk about such things. I'd be an old lady, girl. Best you leave me to my work now. Oh no, no, please tell me. <gasps> I have a success. 
It wouldn't have had a success if I was a bear. Oh, twas a long time ago, girl, when I were a pretty lass. Maldanen were a young nobleman then, and handsome besides. His father, rest his soul, didn't approve of me none. So young Maldanen used to sneak me into the estate he did. Hee <laughs> hee! But that were long before Meldanen became a wizard and such. I'm, I'm doing a very, like, light, not... I'm not sticking to an accent. He's no use for he's no use for a poor old woman no more, and it's best left in the past. Does the entrance still exist? Oh, aye, that it does. Meldan and had a magic door put into me very own home, which leads into his estate. It would open for me at midnight, you see. I keeps the door closed and shuttered now. No idea if it even still opens none. I be hoping Meldan has gone and forgotten about little me. If you wish to use it some me home beyond the north end of the district, here be my key. Take it. Just don't make a mess, mind you. I don't really have anything worth stealing in there, but you look like a guard anyway, so I don't think I need to worry about you. Just use the key and go on in. I'm grateful. Ten these ta take bleh, money. Thank you, my lady. Tis a fair amount of coin for a poor old woman to own. You're very kind. I gave her money. Millie, I love you. You've also potentially just allowed me to go kill your old, your, your, hello, your lover, so... Anyways, we'll have to find Millie's house somewhere around here, and then we'll we'll get in there and be like, "Yo, bro, hi." Um, I'm not going into houses because these houses are different from other areas. Like, this place is basically civilized. Like, this is an actual city. So, like, going around and not terrible Irish. Oh, was it? Awesome. I'm always like, well, this is going to sound like garbage. Um, I am... <gasps> two guard dogs. Animal empathy? Animal empathy? No? Animal empathy? Oh. Three seconds. One, Mississippi. Two, Mississippi. Three, Mississippi. <gasps> oh. <laughs> I can only have one dog. Right. Okay. So we want to find the zoo. At the very least. I'm trying to think, like, if what I had, like, would a true neut or a good neutral character be like, yeah, no, he should totally give up all his, his food. And I think so. I'm trying to, okay, it's, it's fine. He got it. Ah, oh, dang it. No. Silly dog. Eh, wait. This is the zoo. Montgomery sure shot Weatherson bids you welcome to his animal behold. View these beats, beasts for only one gold. I'll pay your one gold. You may enter. Remember that you are a guest and must abide by the rules of common courtesy. The guards do not listen to excuses. Oh, brother. You're going to have a bad time, my dude. Um, speaking of which, I'm going to just save really quick. We'll do this quest and then we'll end it for tonight. I mean, we'll end this. Um, special abilities, druid, I want to be a bear. I don't know why I want to be a bear. Oh, hello, um, Dice Chuck, Neverwinter Nights, I think this is one of the, I honestly love this game. Oh yeah, actually, we're, we're like, so I'm playing this for like right now, um, but we're in the middle of kind of like learning how to create modules for this. I say in the middle, I will show you my treasure, uh, Dice Chuck, if you're still here, and <laughs> I haven't scared you off. So I found this. At a, uh, a used game store. It is a Neverwinter Nights official world building guide. And it is literally like half like how to use the tool set. The Aurora tool set. And then half how to do the scripting. Of course there is a little bit of goofiness. Because this was obviously for the original Neverwinter Nights. And not the enhanced edition. So some of the menus have changed. But I mean it's not that hard. It's still mostly the same. <sighs> some, some finagling. But yeah I've had this. Ah uh, yeah, it's the coolest. I want to try and find the first one too, but uh, yeah, I like. Wa I have um. I think it's actually right behind me. Eh, I get really lucky at the same store. I managed to find Shadows of Undertide, and it was two ninety nine. Undertide, pardon me. I always say it wrong. I also have World of Warcraft, but I own those because I collect game guides and I love game guides. This went nowhere. <laughs> One of the best games. Yeah, it's so good. Got the original one, EE, and E on console. I was very tempted. 
very tempted when I realized that Neverwinter Nights exists on mobile, and I was like, <sighs> and I was like, no, I shouldn't. <laughs> um, I'm. Mm, I should mention this. I've played this game for a very long time. I'm still not very good at it. <laughs> like, we uh, we just did one of the never one of the tombs of never, and um, well, that happened. Uh, it had the, all the swords in it, and I basically ran in, allowed my team members to fight things while I panicked and ran over to the the um the freaking thingamajig. I actually have a physical copy of the gold edition somewhere. I have the manual still. Love that manual. It's like this thick. <laughs> uh, I have to remember how to do this. I think we can go through here. I haven't done the zoo in a while, so this could go like... Am I going to die in here? Uh-oh. Yeah, okay. They don't like me in here. That's fine. I'm a bear. I go where I want. You have the diamond edition? I don't... I. The only reason I have the gold edition is one time I was at... Uh, when I went to community college back in the day, there was a somewhat questionable shady dude selling old video games. And I mean, like, it was, like, straight up, like, he rolled out a carpet and set up shop, like, along the path that students would walk. And Dude Bro had so many PC games... And I would have bought so much more, but I was a poor college student. Um, going to community college, too, so even poorer. Um, but, like, I he had the gold edition of Neverwinter Nights, and it was $5. And uh, this was this was a while ago, like, at 2019. No, I'm sorry, 2009. <laughs> I keep saying 2019 when I mean 2009. What did I study? When I was at um, community college, I actually just did uh, my regular general ed classes and uh, it was mostly just so that I could like kind of I took a year off and then I went to community college if I remember correctly and then afterwards I ended up going to um, the Art Institute of Hollywood which I do not suggest <laughs> um, art institutes are kind of there's something anyways um, I had a good time overall but 100% like it was a it was an experience but I went for game programming um, technically speaking I think the name of my degree is I got a bachelor's in science for game art no I'm sorry hang on game design and programming I think it was that's what it was technically called but I really wanted to just learn the programming aspect and I guess part of me should have known that something was a little funky about going to a school called Art Institute to learn programming but boy howdy did they make me take a lot of art classes and there is if there's one thing that I can't do and I discovered this at said art institute I can't animate <laughs> I hate it I violently hate animation with a passion it is like we learned 3d rigging and we learned like 3d animation and both of those were classes that I was just like it ab, <laughs> stop pretending I'm still young. <laughs> uh, I'm not. Um, well, I'm 31, but I mean, it's young in in the sense that like, whatever. I'm a mother. I'm 31. I am no child. But anyways, I digress. The point is, I learned. I was very good at programming, and I ended up getting a job in actually web dev, not even uh, game programming, but I ended up really liking it, so I stayed there for like six years, almost seven. You went to university and community college, took a lot of science. In community college, I took art, ended up opening an art spot. That's really cool! I love that. Man, opening a store is like a, a secret dream of mine. I just know that I'm not really responsible enough for one, and I'm kind of a little too lazy. Um, but that's cool. That's really cool. 31 is not middle-aged. <laughs> it's like peak adulthood, I think. 60 is... no. I think 40 is technically considered middle-aged. No? Something is middle-aged. Am I okay? I'm okay. I love how I'm just destroying this place and I don't even care. Your unethical zoo is about to go down in flames. I'm a druid. Do I look like I care? Either way, the 30s are the best time of your life, man. I'm going to tell you right now. 30s are great. 
the twenties are not what what media cracks it up to be. Your twenties are a mess of go- not knowing what to do. Oh, that's an interesting walk. <laughs> Hello, Montgomery sure shot Weatherson. It's fine. I'm sure we'll be okay. Oh yeah, we'll be fine. He's badly wounded. Is somewhat arbitrary, differing. It is generally defined as being the ages of 40 and 60. That makes sense. That's what I would have thought too. Because like, I think, I, ooh, oh, oh. I want to use it. Why can't I? I'm an, oh, I know. I'm a bear. <laughs> I was like, I'm an elf. And then I was like, oh, wait, no. Sorry. I'm a bear. <laughs> Um, that bow is cool, though. I want to use that. I'm hella gonna use that bow. Um. What was I going with this? Anyways, I learned a lot of really cool stuff at that school. I will say that. Like, a lot of it was <laughs> kind of useless, like, forcing me to do a bunch of art classes and then pay for them also. The way that the school set up was extremely, um, predatory. Hang on. I need a... Thank you. The way that the school was set... Oh, weapon ineffective. <laughs> I don't think we're going to break this open. This is one of those ones. <laughs> Haven't got all the pains of the 30s yet. <laughs> um, dang it. Okay, there we go. Oh, no. All right, hang on. <clears throat> Guys. Guys, never mind. Never mind. Follow me. Follow. Just just kidding. Um, I was going to say... Uh, Oh, right. Yeah, like, one of the ways that it was a very predatory experience was just, like, the way that they set up the classes was that I, I I was supposed to be able to graduate within two to three years because I had taken classes at community college. So I was supposed to have saved money by doing so. I did not. I was at that school for four years, and that is because whenever I needed to take classes, they didn't offer all of the ones that I needed. And so... Oh, hang on. Thank you. That's fine. Um, what ended up happening was just like, I, I, the other thing is that for, I only paid $80 a semester while I was attending school purely because of need based stuff and, and how I got granted, um, loans. And the only way that it would stay $80 is if I was a half, I was, if I was a full-time student, but I had to work at the same time. So I was a full-time student and then an almost full-time, uh, music teacher at the same time. So that was fun. Uh, <laughs> could only have done it in my 20s, if I'm honest. Maybe now, but mostly in my 20s. Do I want to try anything else? Nah, we'll be a bear. Something very uh, nice about being a, um, a a huge bear. But I... Oh, those are usually... That's going to... There's no way that's not... Aw, <laughs> oh, dadgummit. I forgot to summon my my creature. Anyways, um, yeah, so they, they would set it up so that I basically couldn't take all my classes every quarter is what, what it comes down to. And then this was peak. Okay. This was peak. One, uh, quarter, which I was actually very excited for was a math class that I needed to take. And the reason I was excited for this is that programming in games has actually quite a lot of math in it. And so I wanted to learn this math. And, um, and it was like good math, like not just random math. It was the math that I needed. And I kid you not, the teacher decided he didn't want to work at the school anymore. And halfway through this semester, he just stopped showing up. And I remember we went looking for him because we went, we showed up to a class. He just didn't tell anybody either. He just disappeared, ghosted the school. And so we showed up, we go up to the teacher's area and we go up to the like HR desk or whatever, the secretary desk. And we were like, Hey, is Mr. So-and-so here? And she was like, no, he's teaching a class right now. And we're like, no, he's not. And she was like, yes, he is. He's on schedule for a class. And we were like, we're his class. He's not there. And so she was like, Oh, and she like went up and we went up and down and we could not find him. No one had heard from him. And she was like, well, I guess just, uh, how long has it been? And we were like 30 minutes. <laughs> we're coming up on 40. And she was like, he's probably not coming. <laughs> we ended up getting granted the class for free. We did not have to take it again, which sucked because I basically didn't learn it. And I didn't want to sign up for the class again because I would have to pay for it if I did. So we were granted those credits and that class and I didn't learn anything. So <laughs> 
Good times. Good times. Um, you commented, my 20s were amazing. I worked, oh, video arcade. You're cool, dude. It was closed Sunday, so I would go there on Sundays with my friends, and we would play video games for a while, then play tabletop. Yes! Oh, that's the life, dude. Then open the gate and walk down the empty shopping mall to Subway and get subs and then play more free video games and more RPGs to play more free video games and then go home. That's the best! <laughs> Often the district manager would arrive and would help him unload the brand. That is so cool! That's awesome. And the same issue with biochemistry. Yeah, it was, it was nuts. It was... <laughs> What a weird time, man. What a weird time. Um, well, I guess I don't need to worry about this unethical zoo anymore. Your boss is dead, bro. You ain't getting paid by nobody. Alright, hang on. Alright. Yeah, it was nuts. Um, I had, I mean, like, although I will say I had some pretty cool experiences. Like, one of my favorites was... I had taken some programming classes while I was in community college, so I, I when I got to AI, I was doing okay, and that's probably why I ended up doing as well as I did, is because I had some background, and it helped with their weird system. We are not going to open that, because no one has any ability to unlock it or untrap it. Um, one of my favorite classes, um, we had to basically... We were put into teams of like programmers, um, artists, or what? What do we have? We had programmers, um, art, the level designers, and then the artists, the game artists. And I feel like there was a fourth team, but I, that might have been it. And basically, we were going to create an entire level based off of the game Alien, which had just mostly just come out. And so we went and we watched the movie Alien. We researched um, tech in that time period. And we uh, the art team was phenomenal. They did all of the models within the level were based around items in the movie. So not, everything ma like matched. Everything. We even had like the little bird that dips that does the dip thing. Um, so we had everything was like it looked like it would belong on the set of the Alien movie. Um, the original one. And so... You know, that was a lot of fun. Oh, Master of the Pens. Never mind. There's another person that I need to take out. <laughs> so, um, I ended up being the leader of the programming team. And one of our programmers, he was in charge of the, the model. My teacher helped me. No, actually, it was my friend. One of my friends who is a, a classmate of mine, he actually came over and helped me build my, my, um, my PC and uh, from scratch bless his heart he that was a nightmare it took us eight hours because we were very I pretty much spent all my money on that computer and let me tell you it lasted me 10 years <laughs> I'm on a laptop now but that's just because that computer only died very recently um wait actually oh okay I guess we'll open the door first so yeah no I I was in charge of the programming team and then um, we just did a lot of really cool stuff. At the time, we were working with Unreal Engine, so I decided that we would kind of play around. Oh, my God, the animals. <laughs> um, actually, I think I need to go back through here. Door to the giant tree. Um, so this animal looks up slowly, unsure of your intent. Wait here until I use the Nyatar's scroll outside. The la animal nods, hoping you will come back soon. You sense worry. Okay. Don't worry, bro. I got you. I am your pal. So, we did a lot of really cool stuff. There's still, like, videos on my old YouTube channel of, like, stuff that we figured out. They weren't, like, tutorials or anything. It was just me, like, hey, guys, it's, like, 2 o'clock in the morning, and uh, I figured out how to do this in Unreal. That was a really crazy time period for me, that whole class, because, like, it really prepped me for what it would be like if I did get into the game industry. Um, like, I remember I was on a date with my boyfriend at the time. And I, I had told him at the beginning of the quarter, I was like, this is meant to represent real life. Like, my teacher said, um, this is, you know, we have to treat this as if we were working for the game industry. Which I had a couple cool teachers at that school. And most of my teachers were not. But um, I was like, so we're supposed to react as if this is the game industry. We're supposed to react as if we're salary and not hourly. And so while I was on a date, one of my team members called me and was like, oh, Monica, he was exhausted. We were all exhausted because we were doing all nighters because we only had a quarter to make an entire level that looked like the game Alien. So it was going well. 
Um, but, oh, I did voice acting for it too, which was terrible. I have funny clips of that. Um, but I remember when I did, um, right, so, oh God, what was I talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah, I was on the date. And uh, so they called me up and they were like, Monica, we can't get this to work and we can't do anything else until we get it to work. And I was like, shoot. So we called for the check. We packed everything in boxes and I was like, all right, I'm going to get home right now and I'll start working on it and I'll figure out why it's not working. And my boyfriend at the time, I was like kind of excited because he hadn't really seen me in my element, which was, you know, game programming. And so I was like, you, you know, come over and, and I was still living with my parents and I was like, you know, you can come over and, and sit with me while I work and it'll be fun. And, um, I remember at the time, like we got, we got there and I was so excited to show him the project and everything that we were working on, because it, to me, it was like, it was a huge part of my identity and my life and my dreams and everything. And I was team leader and I was so proud of myself and I was sitting there and he was sitting next to me and I was like trying to show him and he's like, um, you know, I think I'm just going to go home and, you know, play, play some games. And I looked at him and I was like, you realize this is going to be my life, right? Like, this is what this is going to be like. It was dating me if I make it into the game industry. And he was like, yeah, I just, you know, it's, it's cool, I guess. And I was like, oh boy, that quarter taught me quite a lot about myself and also about him and our relationship. And he just, that relationship didn't last that quarter. I remember at the very end of the quarter, because our, some of our teachers were like, the game industry is a very difficult business and not a lot of relationships survive it. So at the end of the quarter, I was like, I'd like to make an announcement. I have joined the rankings of people who have lost <laughs> significant others to the industry. And everyone was like solemn clapping. It was, it was funny. I had a, I had a good, I had a good mentality about it. And honestly, it all worked out for the best because my husband works in the game industry and he is obviously he obviously knows exactly what the game industry is like because he's in it so that voiceover <laughs> yeah it was that one he wanted me to say swears because the idea was like it was if if we got hit by something so if steam hit the character or if she stepped into fire um i was gonna you know say stuff and i said son of a shit or something like that i'm very bad at swearing and so i was coming up with something like I was like, damn it, you know, son of a bitch, the usual ones, fucking hell. And then I, I, my brain got all weird and I was like, son of a shit. And I think I said something like, it was some other really weird ones that and everyone just busted up laughing. Like, what kind of swear was that? I was like, I don't know. I ran out. Um, <laughs> so is it this one? Oh, here we go. Use the transport by via plants scroll to perform. Yeah, I did it. Hooray. Oops. Hang on. I already forgot the controls. Yeah, it was a fun time. It was a very fun time. <laughs> I mean, I, ultimately, I had a ball. So I did not, I was not upset. I mean, like, um, the school ended up getting sued because it was believed that they were taking people's money and giving false promises, which... I don't disagree. Um, I don't disagree with that belief. So run to the tree outside. It will send you to freedom. The animal is instantly more lively. You sense great joy. Hell yeah. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a whole, a whole bunch of fun involving that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I ended up going into web development. Um, I was software engineer and web design full stack for six or seven years, which was fun. I honestly really like software engineering. <laughs> Run to the tree outside, it will bring you to freedom. Um, oh, I'm no longer a bear. I didn't know there was a timer for that. Um, so that was an experience. <laughs> Run to the tree. And I think there's one more cage to go which is actually all the way over here, which I should have done this one last. That's eh, fine. So, yeah. I wish I could show that level. Unfortunately, it didn't... By the time we made it to the end of the quarter, we had a very, very cool, good-looking level. All of the effects worked. All the programming worked. Which was a nightmare and a half in itself. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, the problem was is that the level wouldn't run. So we had to do a lot of finagling to get it to run. And even now, that thing, I, I would not be able to load it. I have it somewhere, I'm sure. Um, 
but it's it exists you know it's a thing <laughs> all right guys the animal looks up slowly. Step into the portal and you will be free. Step into the portal, my friend. You two. Where's the wolf? Hello? It's not like hidden, is it? <laughs> oh, here it comes. I was like, am I the crazy one? Where's the wolf? Guys. Oh my god. Guys. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> Alright, we'll we'll send this wolf on its way and then we'll pop over and do some some mod work for a, for a little bit. And there we go. Handled. Everyone is through, I think. Nayatar claims that the animals are likely to report as truth. Okay. Yeah, I think that's it. I finished it, right? Did I get all the animals? These are the cages, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, pretty sure I got them all. So... I guess we could go talk to Nyatar and be like, yo, bro, I did it. Let's see what Nyatar says. Think I can go through here. Uh, I think, yeah, I have all the doors, so I don't see why it wouldn't work. We'll go talk to Nyatar and then we'll end this. <laughs> If I do decide to go shifter more than what I am right now, I might have to get a healer for my party so that we're, again, balanced because I won't be able to do any heals. There's been progress in feeding the animals. So it's good to know. Truth to be told. My animal spies have kept me informed. I felt it necessary to carefully monitor the creatures involved. All the animals are free and safe. A pity about the deaths among their captors. All life deserves a chance, but perhaps that was their chance. I will call the encounter a success and must reward you accordingly. I am sure you will be pleased. Uh, I demand more. No, that's sufficient. Thank you. You have served the Earth Mother and Tree Father as well as could be done. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sure there was a... You would have liked them to not die, but frankly... I think it's fine. I, I can't remember if I would have got something if I hadn't killed them all, but I got a cool bow. I'm not mad. Look at that thing. That thing is cool, bro. Okay. I, I talk like I think I'm cool. <laughs> I know I'm not. All right. <laughs> Let's go ahead and exit, and then we'll prep for some module work. Um, Now... I have a custom module in mind for, for those of you who have seen m modules before. We're not going to be working on that for quite some time because I still need to <laughs> kind of learn the lay of the land. It's also been a hot minute since I programmed. Um, once I gave birth, uh, I became a stay-at-home mom. And uh, my husband is the – he programs from home, which is fun, actually. It's great. But I digress. So it's been it's been a minute since I since I last was doing programming, and uh, yeah, so we're gonna have fun. With, I'm trying to I'm trying to reorganize my system here. Um, friendly reminder: the lighting in here is god awful. So what am I doing? Let's do this, and then we need to do display capture. Yeah, I know <laughs> it's delightful, and then we are going to. Do the grand old, the usual. Yeah, shuffle it. Why not? Uh, because I feel like music is required. And nothing is more lovely than the Stardew Valley music. So if you see me reading like this, it's just because, like, if I read like this, my shadow <laughs> goes over the book. And I'm an old lady, okay? 
I'm gonna lower this a tad. I do have other sound. I actually do have like the Neverwinter Nights literal soundtrack, but I feel like when working, it's a little much. Right, okay, so we're gonna go back into this and launch the Aurora tool set. And then we are on chapter three. Um so I think I mentioned this in the last one. Chapter two is basically just talking about like what they were planning with their example module. So we have like the plot and task list. Um which is just like telling you what the what the plot is and what all you'll be expected to do and then it mentions that there's a, an appendix at the back for C programming honestly C programming is like especially at least in this it is so similar to C++ and C++ is the first language I ever learned so well actually no that's a lie Java was the first language I ever learned C++ was the second language I ever learned in high school um yeah I was I was uh I had seen the I seen videos on because I my favorite video game at the time was Uncharted which I still love Uncharted so much um I haven't played the third one um just because when it came out I was like in the throes of college and I just didn't have time to play it but um yeah the first Uncharted was my obsession and I like a hundred percent of that game and then while I was watching some of the like the devlogs and stuff and they were like, oh yeah, we're game programmers and we work at Naughty Dog in Santa Monica. And I was like, I want to do that. And so like my next year of high school, I took programming classes <laughs> and I have this particular, so I'm not like, I'm not, okay. I went to school in LA and I do have moments where I sound very valley girl and I have, I'm very klutzy and I'm very like, a little scattered okay it's perfect music I'm a little scattered so I remember one time we were on the bus and uh like we were heading to uh, a performance because I was also in marching band sorry and um I was a big nerd <laughs> and I remember I was talking with a friend and they were like oh you want to do video game programming instead of music and I was like yeah and they were like well what is game programming and I was like well it's like when you figure out stuff I started talking about like Pokemon and uh and I, so I was talking about Pokemon and I was like, well, you know, the random encounters are not, there's a whole bunch of math behind that. And at the time I was still just learning programming. So this was like a new concept to me. And so I was sitting there talking about it and I got really excited and I like ripped out some sheet music and was like writing on the back the way that I thought that it could be done. And then I remember I, as I was like very excitedly talking about it, cause I talk a lot, A, I'm sure you've all noticed and B, I talk very loudly normally. And um, as I was sitting there talking about this, I suddenly realized that the entire bus had gone dead silent. And I looked up and I was like, I'm like sitting there with like a pen in my hand and my sheet music like, like this. And I was like riding on the bus and I was like, and that's how it would be done. <laughs> and everybody was like, Jesus, <laughs> I didn't know you knew that. It was, it was a very funny experience. Um, but yeah, everybody was like, oh, I guess that is something that you could do. So anyways, it says, if you'd like to follow along, for those of you who have it, we're on chapter three. I figured it would be fun. I'm not, I'm not in a rush to make this module, I should say, um, just as a warning, because like, this is very much like a for fun type of thing for me. Obviously, it's not like I could make money off of a Neverwinter Nights module. Um, and also the module in question is going to be based off of Cinderella. So... <laughs> I'm not out here, I'm not out here making, making waves, okay? Like, I'm just having fun. So I thought it would just be fun to take our time and learn stuff, you know? All right, so it says the basic structure of a Neverwinter Nights campaign is made up of one or more, pardon, modules linked together by a common storyline. Each module contains one or more areas. These areas represent small sections of the module area, such as the interior of a dark, busty cave, a far-flung border town, or the bustling town square of Neverwinter. There are plenty of decisions to be made for individual areas, but there are also key decisions involved in making a module-wide level. For example, what will the flow of time be? How much XP will players be rewarded? What will happen when a player dies? Awesome. Love that. Game design is a, is a huge favorite thing of mine. So we're actually going to do a new module. Uh, yes. We're going to call this... 
Um, tutorial 2. Whoa. That should be fine. How about the fourth? The fourth what? I already... <laughs> Similar to the earlier topic. It's already gone <laughs> whenever I was talking about that the context for that was for. Excuse me. Um, it says, uh, the name of your module. Oh, shoot. Hang on. English. Oh. So it says... It says, better yet, forget all those weirdo Europeans and leave the rest. Okay, so. I'll leave the rest of the languages blank. Our apologies to any European readers. Interesting. So if I want. Oh, my chat just disappeared. So is one of the love interests named Robin? <laughs> we could do. We, I could just literally make one of the prince options Robin Hood, just for giggles. For anyone here who doesn't understand the reference, I have an obsession with Robin Hood, so I know. Don't ask. <laughs> I, I explained that to someone once, and they were like, "That's random." I'm American. I feel I feel like it would make more sense if I was European or specifically English, British. Um, but yeah, no, I'm American, so people are like, "Robin Hood." Why? And I live in the Midwest, where like country, country. Westerns. Westerns are a big thing. So everyone's like, why Robin? Um, anyways. The name of the module used within the code of the module by certain functions. When you're referring to the module with script functions, we need to call for a tag. I don't have this. See, okay. Already, this is something that's a bit different. So this this does not look like this in the, in the manual or in the book. Um, so this is different. Male, female. Interesting. All right, well, we'll just call this tutorial two next. We need to call this for the tag. You don't need to enter the area or coordinate values. They're altered whenever you change the... Uh, location of the one and only starting point in your module. To change these values, just click on the place starting point val whatever. Interesting. Okay, so we we're, I think we have to do the area wizard because yeah, we can't access any of these other um, any of these other things that it's talking about until I set up an area, I think. Or one of the animals that help you is named Robin. <laughs> is a Robin and they're named Hood. That would be pretty great. It's a typical blah blah blah. Module scripting events. Perhaps we're just gonna look at this. Okay, so it says it's acting like I have access to module wizard create areas we don't really have an area yet see it wants me to set up all this advanced stuff and I can't do that yet in this version of Neverwinter Nights module properties and the edit menu I see okay no I'm stupid I'm I'm boo boo the foo over here so it doesn't say what it wants for the beginner area so, unless I was on this page and I'm I am still Boo Boo the Foo. I love game guides. I love the way pages feel in game guides. I just feel so like I feel like I'm reading something of importance. So I think this is fine. Alright, so it hasn't it hasn't told me anything about an area yet, so I think we'll just create an area. We'll probably just do area 001, that's fine. I can rename it later and we'll do forest. That's fine. And then we'll just keep it that way. And then I can go ahead and get into what we want to get into. No, no. Next. Finish, congratulations. Terrain and game. Yeah, that's fine. All right, so we want to go into edit. 
module properties. Bada bing! Finally. Tag is module. I mean, that makes sense to me. I don't know. Yeah, so start area. We really don't need to worry about that because we only have one area, starting point area. Minutes and hours, so that's under advanced. You can alter the length of your module day by changing the number of minutes in an hour. The default of two minutes per hour is that is what the game uses, but there's no reason you can't have your game run in real time, 60 minutes per hour, or even slower, up to 240 minutes per hour. Why? I mean, I'm sure there's a reason why, but why? Dawn, dusk, start hour. Change the time that day and night begins. If your campaign features the extra long nights of an ice wind dale winter, Oh, you can set dawn at 12 and dusk at 16. That's kind of neat. Starting month. The month is pretty much only for flavor, as it can only be seen in journals or used as a token in NPC conversations. They say the number, so 6, not June. Today's, you know, ah, we've entered the new month of the year, 6. <laughs> Anyways. Starting day hour as above. If you don't make any changes, the game will begin on June 1st at 1 p.m. For our Haven module, we'll want the starting hour to be midnight, so it's nice and dark. Okay, so we want zero. The file name of your module, which may be called by certain... The file name of your module, is that over here? It's not in here. Res ref, yeah, that's not in here. Uh, events, oh, that's very nice. There's no res ref. So res ref is the file name of your module, which may be called by certain scripting functions. They must have got rid of that because I'm pretty sure that's literally what this is. And then there's also your name, which is just, in this case, tutorial too. I probably could change this to like, Haven. <laughs> So that it sounds a little nicer than just tutorial two. Um, pr uh, XP scale. Do I even have that over here? I do. Proof that you've been cheated out of obscene amounts of XP in the official campaign. Yep, you're only getting 10% of the XP for defeating monsters that you should get that you should get by third edition rules. Since there's a lot more combat in D and D video games then in a typical pencil and paper module it makes sense to keep this low but if your campaign is short on action you may want to raise this a bit if you want to cheat in the official campaign load up a chapter jack this up to 200 and save it under a different name you'll be level 20 in two hours in a few hours hack file res ref if you make any custom content for your module yeah it's not in here either um new enemy skins new character portraits new music new placeables You'll put it all in a hack file and refer to that file here. Interessant. We don't have that. So, uh, there's a section over here. It says, as with everything in Neverwinter Nights, modules and areas can be scripted with unique effects, events, behaviors, and play mechanics. In most cases, the script examples you will see are taken directly from the official campaign for our module. This means that the entire script is usually used to illustrate a point. However, in some cases, I will be using only those parts of a script that are related to the current concept you are learning. I will point this out. As Neverwinter Nights scripts are written using the C computer language, all Neverwinter Nights, blah, blah, blah. If you're experienced with C or any other language, it'll be easy for you to understand existing scripts and write new ones. However, for those of you with no experience in the C language, it is a very daunting task to understand or write these scripts. Therefore, we suggest that you skip right to the back of the book for the appendix. I've read the appendix, I've read a little bit of the appendix just because I was curious. It's not really beginner friendly, I'm not going to lie. Um, all right. So, pretty sure that's it. Um, it goes over things, I think, in the events tab. Yeah. Oh, I see. They put the res ref thing, the hack packs, in a new tab called custom content. So that's good to know. Alright, so we've got item related scripts client related scripts uh, call called when the client enters or exits the module huh can I take a look at the script I'm curious yeah that's fine so we have 
OPC get entering object. Mod pre-enter override for other skin systems. Oh, interesting. Huh. This feels very much like a like a bug fix. <laughs> this is basically saying if you have the feet for for riding, for mounting, for being able to be on a horse, it wants you to have the horse menu. And then re restore PC horse status from database. So give you a horse. Add horse menu. So if you are the player character, it says restore appearance in case you export your character in mounted form. Pre-cache horse animations for player as attaching a tail to the model. Interesting. So it's just like horse stuff, which is fascinating. So we also have this script, which is X3 mod pre-enter. Can I open this? Bummer. Okay. That wasn't what I wanted. I want to see the script. X3 mod pre-enter. Can I do I not have an open? Next find in files. Find text. Bookmark. Hmm. I can't look at it. I was curious to see what exactly it was calling in the oh, before mod or entering mod script. The module behavior depending on the entering PC. Heartbeat script called every six seconds of game time. Not by accident does this coincide with the length of a typical combat round. Excuse me. Useful for providing animations for NPCs in games, checking on the status of a trap or object, or anything else that requires frequent maintenance. Okay. Called when the module initially loads. This is before you are able to control your player character. Useful for initializing local variables. Okay, so that's actually kind of the one I want to see. So on module load, I want to see what happens when the module gets loaded. I'm just curious. Tweak the behavior of several subsystems in your module. Game difficulty, core rules. Game difficulty difficult? Heckin' rude. This initializes Bioware's wandering monster system as part or as used in Hordes of the Underdark. What does that mean? If you want to use it, make sure. Wandering monster system. What's the wandering monster system? says it loads faster. I'm curious. I want to know what this wandering monster... It's not going to be in here because it says it's for uh, Underdark... Or, or, under, what is it? Hordes of Underdark. So that's a DLC or uh, it's a module. What was it? Underdark Mo Wandering Monster System. Guide to the Mask of the Betrayer and Wandering Monster System. Osiris? Wandering Monsters. This feature should generate new creatures out of thin air. Ooh. Are features used by or proposed for the open source rule set? 
I'm going to call it Osiris. Each of these features implements some specific functionality of the overall package and either adds a new aspect to Neverwinter Nights or improves an existing aspect. Osiris features starts out as text descriptions. Sire functionality. Okay, okay, okay. Concepts. This feature should enable the cooking of food, provide a torch, and enable faster hit point recovery, but with an increased chance of an encounter with wandering monsters. That's kind of neat. Death system. DMFI. Dungeon Master Friendly Initiative. NBDE. Faster usage. Player killer control system. Player respawn. Wandering monsters. This feature should generate new creatures out of thin air. <laughs> Alright, I, I don't know why I expected to get more. However... <laughs> Oh, this feature will provide a multifunctional generic tavern template that automates a variety of functions associated with inns and taverns. Oh boy. So if this was all introduced specifically with Ty or with hordes of Underdark, that's not going to be in here. So there's going to be some things that we'll probably stumble across as we go. I'm glad I just, you know, I'm glad I was looking at the code and that I saw something like this. I don't know how we're going to be able to implement this. Encoded, reasonably tested, and released. So what is this? Features classified as coding are ideas for inclusion in Osiris in which development was started but not completed. These features have their own articles in Neverwinter Nights Wiki. Interesting. I'll have to look more into this because I'm not 100% sure what this is. It won't be in here, that's for sure. Anyways. Unless it is. I don't know. Player-related scripts. Called when the PC is dead or dying, respawning in the module, and resting during the campaign. A very powerful script group that allows complete control over the PC death cycle, respawn, and resting. More on this later. User-defined script called by the signal event useful for implementing any custom behavior you can imagine okay, I thought I heard my, my child moving so scripting for items an item is anything in the game the PC is able to place in their inventory obviously um, you may need to use scripting for items when the item develops or completes a quest for example, a character tells you to find a scroll, and when you find it, your journal is updated, or the item has an ability that is too complicated to be created by the item editor, such as instantly teleporting the player character to a certain area when activated, like the stone of recall that we use. Let's focus on quest-related items first. Inter interesting. Guinevere. Good lord. This whole beginning section kind of feels more like an explanation of stuff. So like, the module and areas. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw something that says the just screw em system. If you, hey, if your NPCs didn't want to be dead, they shouldn't have pickpocketed that Balor Lord. If players are fate playing alone, they'll be forced to load a save game. If they're playing multiplayer, I'm not sure what this was in what, what this was in uh, reference to, but I wonder. I might have to look a little more over this on my own just to see what. Because this feels less like a telling you what to do next and more going over like things that need to be done or things that can be done with stuff. I don't know. Yeah, 
Yeah, and then it just goes into C scripting. Interesting. Okay, so we're gonna I'm gonna have an interesting time with this. Hey Gontes, welcome. Because I don't this is interesting. This is not exactly what I was expecting for this chapter. I was expecting a similar thing to what the first chapter was, but this kind of seems more like it's just going over the basic ideas of making a module. So it's not going to actually guide me through making the module that they outlined in chapter two. So chapter two may have just been, here's what you can do when making your own module. In which case, I mean, we really could just literally do, um, we could just do this and apply it to Cinderella, but I mean, it'd be kind of fun to take the module that they, they outlined and try to apply what they were talking about in chapter two and try to actually make it for myself. It's just going to be interesting because there's going to be a lot of reading. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, I guess I guess I knew that was going to happen. It's just going to be very interesting. So I guess if we want to look at it that way, we can go ahead and take a look at what our our starting area is supposed to be. This is the plot and task lists. So scene 1 is we're going to have a caravan wreck. We plan to put in optional tasks for players to complete on their journey, but the progression of our main plot is linear. That makes it easy to summarize. See, they make it sound like they're going to walk you through it, but they kind of... I mean, it doesn't look like they do. Unless it's, like, scattered around in here. Let's see this. Example on acquire item script. So it's commonly a player character receives a quest by either. Okay, so real quick, let's see. I need to brush up. So this first scene that we're supposed to do says um, there's a caravan wreck, a Yonti Raiders cave, and various dead end caves. So, oh dear. Pardon me. Hang on. Where am I? Oh yeah, so the idea that they talk about in number two, er, in chapter two, I'll read it briefly. It says, two small frontier settlements cut off from the rest of civilization are battling nature and each other to eke out a living in an unforgiving part of the world. As if they didn't have enough problems, they've just been discovered by a xenophobic native race that wants them gone at all costs. The PCs were hired to escort a supply caravan to the region, but its unexpected destruction at the hands of the enemy has left the PCs stranded in this difficult world. As the only neutral party in the region, the PCs represent the only hope of destroying the enemy and saving the region. So... We won't talk about the ethics of this. <laughs> I like the, the, the line, they've been discovered by a xenophobic native race that wants them gone in a land that was probably owned by said xenophobic race long before the settlers showed up. Anyways. <laughs> Um, so scene one is the player returns to the smoldering debris of a caravan he or she was hired to guard. The caravan was attacked by an army of monsters led by a few Yonti raiders. The Yonti took most of the caravanners as slaves and led them into a cave in the, in the nearby hills. The player can rescue a few survivors. On the trail of the Yonti, the player will witness Grist, a half-orc barbarian and fellow caravan escort, battling the raiders' minions. Um, the, uh, the, the odds will be slightly against the barbarian, so the player will need to intervene to save Grist. If he does, Grist will insist that they continue into the caves to save your employers, and will offer to join your group as a henchman. The raider's trail leads to an impassable underground lake. A caravan member, badly wounded and left to die by the Yonti, can be found at the shore. He sends you east to Riven Vane to get help. Right, okay, so things that we would need to do that I don't necessarily yet know how to do. So we need to set up a starting area for this. Japan be like. 
Um, so we need to set up a starting area. So the caravan wreck, which is where we're going to start. It says it's going to be a rural area. So we at least know that, I guess. Um, we can actually go ahead and delete this. Yes, that's fine. And then we'll go to wizard and we'll go to area wizard. And then we're going to call this the caravan wreck. And it says it is a rural type map. And then I guess we could make it large. Should we? It has a Yonti Raiders cave and various Dendon caves. So yes, I feel like we should make it large. Guess we'll find out. Oh, excuse me again. I might have to end the live stream soon just purely because I'm tired. The odds will be slightly against it. Okay, so we need to set up a smoldering debris area of the caravan that we were guarding because that's where the, the mod starts. We're probably going to need to fence off uh, a portion of this level. So, you know, we could start, say, here. We'll have, like, the caravan somewhere around here. We put some cliffs around the edge here. Um, we'll have, like, the exit over here. And then we should make this at least somewhat easy to like you know somewhat of a path right we don't want the player to feel like they're being herded but we also don't want the player to feel like they're going to be easy it's easy to get lost so um so that much i can do that's not that difficult now we do need to be able to, on the trail of the Yonti, the player will witness Grist, a half-orc barbarian and fellow caravan escort, battling the raider's minions. The odds will be slightly against the barbarians, so the player will need to intervene to save Grist. Right, so this person is going to be a henchman, if I remember correctly, um, which I don't know how to do. Although I wonder if there's like a tools, conversation editor, faction editor, script editor, Wizards, we have Merchant Placeable. NPCs, do half orcs? There are no half elf uh, eight orcs. Or, pfft, there's no half elf thingies. Okay, wait, hang on. And we probably want Creature Wizard. And then we would say half orc. Look at him. He's precious. And then we would give him a class. Okay. 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 So he is a half orc barbarian. I mean, I guess it's not that hard for me to just kind of go through and be like, uh. Aberration. Dragon? That's a class? Ooh. 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 Okay, that's cool. That's good to know. And then we have... Did I miss Barbarian? Am I insane? Aberration? Shadow Dancer. Harp Harper Scout. Blackguard. Oh, he's... A He's already got Barbarian. I'm dumb. Okay. So then we go to... if It doesn't say what level we should make him, but... We're going to make him like 5. We'll make him... I don't know. We'll make him level 1. It's fine. Well, he's a male. His appearance is half orc. Select portrait. For Grist. I like this one. He is a defender? I wonder what the defender... What's a defender faction? Does this have a section on factions? Oh, it's probably under creatures. So if I went to 67... I wonder if this is how I'm meant to do this. Creatures are one of the most important parts of any module. They're the NPCs that give you the quest, the henchmen that aid you... 
The egalitarian tool set doesn't differentiate between NPCs and monsters. They're all just creatures. Here we go. Gender for gender. Why did I say that? Hang on. Challenge rating, description, conversation. Wait, where was their... Did I miss it? Where's their faction? Oh. Is this because I'm using the wizard? <laughs> Hang on. Oh, here we go. Defenders. Defenders also hate hostile creatures and risk life and limb to protect commoners, merchants, and each other. Okay, so yeah, he would be a defender. Verbag. Verbag. So we would name him Grist. Sure. Han Kaluish. Okay, so we have we have our lovely dude here. We're gonna I guess we'll put him under NPCs and half orcs. I don't know how to make him launch creature properties yes a please so this is grist half work description category conversation advanced appearance special abilities skills comments scripts i'm not afraid of doing excuse me stuff like this and just trying to fiddle around I actually kind of prefer doing it like this because it's just kind of nice. Advanced. He is plot. We don't. We really don't want him to die because. I mean, well, if he's a hench, no, we want we want him to be plot. Specify if this creature can be damaged but cannot die because we, if he's integral to the story, we don't want him to die. A defender. Percentage rage update instances. Statistics. Spells, special abilities, classes, scripts. So how would we I suppose <laughs> it's probably under creatures where we just were. Do -do. Is it? So general scripting for creatures. Um, the on spawn. On heartbeat, on perception. On blocked, on user defined. Oh. How do I make a henchman? Oh, making your own henchman. There's a ton of stuff to consider when making henchmen, and making henchmen from scratch is a process for experienced scripters only. Well, heckin' rude. The rest of us can resort to plagiarism. <laughs> Use the new, the basic new CH ACX scripts for all aspects of your henchman and make minor modifications if necessary. But that's only half the job. The basic henchman script set. Assuming they haven't changed the names before the game's release. The conversation files where you hire, fire, and change the behavior of your henchmen contain dozens of specialized scripts. If you want your henchmen to work basically as they do in the official campaign, then it's easiest to steal the conversation file from a henchman in the game, replace the dialogue line by line, and delete the stuff that doesn't pertain to your henchman, like the henchman subplots and requests to use abilities your henchman won't have. If you'll be using the scripts from the Trade of Blades henchman, you may need to modify the conversation scripts. Pavel from the prologue is much easier to modify since he has a much tighter dialogue file. But Pavel has a few limitations. He can't heal, can't level up, and can't use ranged weapons. So those behavioral hooks aren't in his conversation file. Oddly, spellcasting options are. You can add these lines to the conversation yourself. Uh, you may have noticed that when henchmen level up, they actually destroy themselves <laughs> and are replaced with a higher level version. That's hilarious. Since henchmen can't level up the way PCs do, You'll need to make a version of them for each level. 
with their blueprint res ref names incrementally numbered in the same way as the henchmen in the official campaign so they can be accessed by the copy locals level up function oh no we haven't made any henchmen that have the ability to level up so i must admit we haven't tested this but it should work hopefully we'll have more details about working with henchmen in the comment files of our module Oh boy, that's going to be quite some steps. Please don't level me up, I'll die. So you're a bad enough programmer to rescue the henchman. <laughs> so what it wants me to do is use the NW scripts. And here they are. NW CH So here's AC1 It does AC1 AC2 ACB AC5 6 8 3 4 9 ACA 7 ACE and ACD Huh Oh, man. All right. So I'm going to have to take a look at this when I get a chance. This is a little... Oh, wait. Come back. What was that? Edit? Okay. All right. Come back. Load script set. What does that do? Oh, Huh. Now I'm not so sure. <laughs> Never mind. I thought that it would be... I guess if I saved like this, then that would make it really easy later to do the exact same thing. Skills advanced. Yeah, see, we have a blueprint res ref, which is grist. So we would need to create... <laughs> according to the book we would need to make a bunch of versions of him so that, and they would all be called Grist. I'll have to go back and reread that. I was curious to see if they've simplified this process, but I don't think so. Interesting, okay. So we have conversation, faction, script, and journal. Sorry if that shook. Plot wizard. What's plot wizard? What does that do? Nothing? Oh, oh god. What have I done? Okay. Set the basic options. Oh, is this like quests? Define the cast, plot giver, villain, extras, define the props, create the plot nodes, and then finish. Huh. Okay. So is this like... Let's see. I'm thinking. This is quick start. Interesting. 
talk to sender to get the item to deliver. Is that in here? I don't think that's in here. That seems new. That must be new. All right, I think I'm gonna have to read some of this on my own and just kind of get a gist for what the next few chapters are gonna be like because there's a lot to look at and it's mostly just me sitting here like, like that now I will say this one thing that I might do tomorrow with my son if he's interested at all um, how to make a never winter nights module if we go to YouTube there's this guy and I, I I'm gonna go ahead and watch all this person's videos because they're each well I've already watched a few but I was mostly doing that like in the beginning on <laughs> mp3 oh, is that a screenshot I can't open it. Dang it. Or is that... No, I'm sure that's actually... Why did I click that? I'm sorry. It's 1027 at night. I'm tired. MP3 is a music, it's a music file. Don't judge me, okay? <laughs> my my brain is, is in toddler mode. Okay. Anyways, I digress. The point of this is... Um, <laughs> Uh, these videos are each five minutes long. I'm going to start over on them. <laughs> Don't you laugh at me, Gantes. Um, I'm going to start over because now I have a better understanding of this. But it is literally like an entire an entire like tutorial. So, <laughs> conversations with placeable objects. Oh, hell yeah. Quality of life shortcuts. Creating and editing factions. I already know how to do that. Model Module properties, basics, wandering NPC animations, post waypoints. For guards, NPC walk waypoints, that's cool. Creating a map note, sound object basics, making an encounter and getting killed, player journal basics, conversation conditions and actions, conversation tokens, merchant store, door and container keys, create a custom item, basic creature properties, create a creature... Mm, he doesn't talk about... It doesn't look like he talks about creating a henchman. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> um, so we'll have some fun learning the more complicated aspects of this, I think. Especially considering it looks like there's stuff in the Enhanced Edition that simply just does not exist in... Uh, let's call this Haven. No, wait, we're going to call this Tutorial Haven so that I know what to delete later. Because <laughs> I have Tutorial Black Grove in... Oh, I'm sorry, I don't need this. Tutorial Haven. We have these other things. And I actually kind of want to open one real quick. I want to look at some of these. I want to look at... I don't know what any of these are, so I'm just going to look at Kingmaker because it sounds cool. This module requires the following hack packs, but they were not found. Cam resources. Interesting. Okay. So we can't open that one. Contest of Champions. Can I open that one? It looks like it. This is going to be hard. I can already kind of... I was zoning out a little bit. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa. All right, so this is like, oh, uh, dang it. This is an arena thing. So we have some sound notes here. Oh, I can hear them. Oh, I see. Okay, so when you get close, the torches make sounds that make sense. I think this is where we start. Oh no, this is where other things start. I'm gonna undo what I just did. So where? Is 
Just kind of zooming around. Merchants, placeables. There's merchants? I don't think there is, actually. Blue team headquarters. Oh, this is supposed... This is 100% like... This is like a multiplayer thing. Okay. I might... <laughs> this one is, ga is er, bleh, geared towards multiplayer, so I might try to open up the Dark Ranger's treasure. Let's try that one. No. No. Do not keep the changes. <laughs> we do not need this to get saved over. <laughs> Perrin and Talius. Oh, God. <laughs> Perrin Trigger and Talius. Dead Man's Marsh. So there's three areas. Uh oh. It's wigging out. <laughs> Interesting. I might have to look through a couple of those, a couple of things, and read through this a little bit by myself and just see what it's planning on doing in terms of making this module that it set up. Oh God, how big is this? <laughs> it doesn't have any creatures here in Dead Man's Marsh, or so it looks. The Dark Ranger's treasure. Oh, here we go. No wonder this took so long to boot up. Can I turn off, like... Okay, here's shadows. Never mind. I was gonna... There we go. <laughs> the map freaked out. What is all that? Encounters. Humanoids. Oh my god, these are all different encounters and they just have them all like on top of each other. <laughs> How many humanoids? Jesus, you like walk up here and you start walking up to the door and it's gonna summon like 18 different creatures. How hard is this? <laughs> so those are encounters. Toad's loop. Wow. They really took their sounds seriously, didn't they? But if uh, if it has that, then how does it not have a creature? Merchants placeables? No, that's like... Sounds triggers waypoints. Because we have these scripts for, like, Perrin and Talia's, right? Here we go. So if we go to this one and we go to wherever this Perrin person is, we could take a look at, like, what's on them. I'm an idiot. All right, hang on. Or Talia's. Dang it. Okay. I'm just curious to see the 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 things on this person. N W C two. So this I don't. This isn't a person that that can be hired. So it looks like it's all default. So I wonder what this person would even say. I want to see this. <laughs> you might, you look like you might be of assistance. I'm Perrin Isric, adventure extraordinaire. And who might you be? So this person, Perrin, is in fact, where is this Perrin person? Because they're, they're a, uh, a person that you can hire. But there's only one creature. It's in In of the Lance. Oh no, here's Perrin Spawn. Jesus. There we go. Okay. Huh? Ah. I'm confused. 
Heron, a waypoint, a waypoint. Oops. All right. So where is Perrin? So if we go to NPCs and we go to humans, there's Talius and the Aha <laughs> Oh no. Here we can see it. <laughs> oh no. Okay. So this is exactly what that thing was talking about, right? So this is the spawn point for this guy. And I think this is all different versions of Perrin, depending on what level this Perrin person is. He's a gnome. So scripts, he has the uh, CH classes. So, I mean, I could save this script set. Is he a... He's no permanent death, and he is plot. So it's not that he's immortal, he's just no permanent death. Specify if this creature should never explode on death. Okay. It's good to know. That's, that's important. So many parents to die. <laughs> okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and end this, this live stream here. We have a lot to look through. We have a lot to learn, but it's exciting. It's, uh, it's a little intimidating, but I think I'll be able to figure this out. Honestly, I'm going to zoom out. The sound of toads is, un is inescapable. It's because we're in a swamp. It's interesting to see this, though and be able to like look at this right because I can see like all the things that these are meant to um represent like we have these sound particles here that it's interesting to just see how many there are I think is what it comes down to anyways I'm gonna go ahead and end this live stream here this was no 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 <laughs> I don't want to save any changes dear god so, yeah, I think I'll spend today, a little bit of today, because it's already 1040. And I stayed up later than I meant to. 1040, and also it's just, I'm tired. <laughs> but I'll spend tomorrow kind of looking through some of these, and also watching these five-minute videos, because I love this. Tutorial videos are sometimes really daunting for me, because they're always like, is that a minute 49? <laughs> it's a minute 49, it's a minute 34. You'll love to see it. Um, anyways, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and watch some of these. When, oh, this was released four months ago. My guy. Oh, anyways, I'm sorry, I got distracted. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and page through that guide just to see if it's like I'm supposed to figure out the module by myself or, you know, that. We'll see. Anyways, I will see you guys next time. Thank you very much for watching. Have a wonderful evening and a wonderful Tuesday. Take care of yourselves. You know, all that fun stuff. <laughs> well, I'm getting tired now, so now my brain's kind of... That's fizzling. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.